people, ladies and gentlemen, when something happens to them, what they do is they begin to believe that that's the way it is. That's the way it's always been. And they can't see the possibility of it being any different. Example, before April 1954, the common belief, the universal belief, because it had been tried again and again and again and people had failed, the belief was that man was not physically capable of breaking the four minute barrier, that he could not run a mile in less than four minutes. That was the belief on the planet. It had never been done. But here's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Roger Bannister came along and he broke the four minute barrier. Now here's what's significant about that. Since that time, up to this day, over 20,000 people have done it, including high school kids. What changed? 20,000 people, what changed? Here's what happened when they got on the track. They knew it had been done. And because they knew it had been done, there was a new belief about this barrier, about this goal that was unreachable. And those 20,000 people got in the race believing, knowing in their heart that someone had done it, that it's possible that they could do it. And I'm saying that if you know anybody that had some goal, some dream, something they wanted to do, and they did it, then I'm saying that you know in your heart that if someone has done it, then you can do it. It's possible. And that if someone can make their dream become a reality, that it's, it's possible that you can make your dream become reality. The time was 3 minutes 0.7 seconds, and by now the crowd was roaring. A four-minute mile was possible. Somehow, to do it, I had to run the last lap in 59 seconds. Chataway led round the next bend, and then I pounced past him at the beginning of the back straight, 300 yards from the finish. I had a moment of mixed joy and anguish when my mind took over. It raced well ahead of my body and drew me compellingly forward. I felt that the moment of a lifetime had come. Those last few seconds seemed never ending. A faint line of the finishing tape stood ahead as a haven of peace after the struggle. I leapt at the tape, like a man taking his last spring to haven, save himself from the chasm that threatens to engulf him. My effort was over, and I collapsed almost unconscious with an arm on either side of me. It was only then that the real pain overtook me. I knew I had done it before I even heard the time. I felt as if I was too close to have failed.